he killed all the animals and number three the bible says he made a public feast and i told us that these three things very important your willingness your sacrifice and your show of public declaration that you will do the will of god it will save you from backsliding you know all the people that have seen you announce that you are born again and you make a public declaration of your salvation how will you go back to them you know it's one of the things that helps us it keeps us from falling don't hide your salvation praise the lord sister twins are you here let your eyes be up today hmm? maybe i should even put you among the group and begin to train you too will you join the group i didn't hear you your second is not speaking sister will you join the group okay the lord bless you so let's look at first Kings chapter 19 let's have it on screen we'll stand up to read 19 to 21 first Kings chapter 19 19 to 21 let's be on our feet let's read the three verses together we are reading together right now where's josh lily that's what happened to people whose houses are very close they finished singing they rushed to the house to go and drink water i, I thought you went to drink water uh -huh. don't go and drink water they want they finish uh, anything they say they want to go and eat themselves at home you now i've told you i've placed you on that special watch for the first time today he came very early to church he didn't want me to write that in his letter when your your fiance pastor writes to me though no, you have not cancelled it so that's just your first day so i'm still watching you let's read together one two and let's go so he departed from there and found elisha the son of shaphat who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him and he was with the 12th then elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him verse 19 let's go uh, 20 sorry and he left the oxen and ran after elijah and said please let me kiss my father and my mother and then i will follow you and he said to him go back again for what have i done to you verse 21 the last one so elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate then he arose and followed Elijah and became what? His servant. The old King James will say, and he ministered unto him. Some other new versions will say, and he became his apprentice. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats. The Lord will give us deep understanding today in the name of Jesus. And he followed him and he became his servant. I only have one question I want to ask and i'll be answering it in this service what's the question why is it that we don't really slash easily see believers like this today believers who willfully and publicly make known their intention i'll come back again so you can write down their intention complete to completely follow the ways and the will of god let's take it again because of those of you writing why is it that we don't really see believers like this today why is it that we don't really see believers like this today now the same question in another form believers who will sorry who willfully and publicly make known their intention can i say continue to completely follow the ways and will of god have you captured it i should come again okay why is it that we don't really see believers like this today if you have finished that one let me look, go to the next should i go on okay believers who willfully and publicly make known 
known their intention to completely follow the ways and the will of God. Have you written it? Now, don't forget that where I stopped last week, I told you that the willfulness of Elisha is something that is very touching. Elijah didn't say anything. He just touched him. And you know, it made me to realize when me too, I gave my life to Jesus. It was the same way. The pastor ministered to me and I was crying. And I made up my mind from that moment that I will serve God. So why is it that we don't see or why is it that it's not common to see such believers today? Why is it that we don't see or it's not common to see ministers that are ready to do the will of God. You know, I remember when I, 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 God revealed to me that he's calling me to do his work. I didn't argue. Ah, as God revealed it to me, I went to my pastor to tell him the vision I saw. And my pastor interpreted it as a calling. I didn't argue. Instantly I said, Lord, I surrender to your will. Now we want to know why it is not like that again today you know today we see a lot of christians still struggle with sin yet they confess to be born again we see a lot of pastors still dining with the devil yet they are standing and saying we are servants of the most high god today it is difficult to even differentiate who a true christian is from a non-believer because of the way they talk you you hear some christians talk and you'll be wondered you'll be wondering are this one sanctified thank you in any way have they really devoted their lives to jesus you know there are some there are some christians homes you will enter and you'll be wondering are, are you sure these people in, are born again you know you know this morning uh, the lord was talking to me while i was there he said son i should have a meeting with the ministers i mean sorry with the with the men and what was God teaching me? He says, son, talk to them. Show them that scripture where I said that I know Abraham for he shall surely command his children to follow my, my commandment. So I'll be having that meeting with men. The Lord was just telling me here. He said, talk to the men. How many men are willing to, to command the will of God in their family? That the will of God must be done in my family. How many men? I'll soon call for the meeting. So let's answer this question. What is happening in today's Christianity? Why is it that we have too much people confessing to be born again but are not manifesting the life of Christ? That's what we want to ask. Because if everybody is like an Elisha, I'm telling you, this world will have changed. Things, if every minister is like an Elisha, you are ready to say, God has called me, I'm ready to do it. God has, has instructed me, I'm ready to face it. But today we have the otherwise. So the, the question, I put why under it. Now, listen. Today's believers don't know God enough to be able to trust Him with their lives. And I will show it to you. I will prove it to you. The answer. Today's believers don't know God enough to be able to trust God with their lives. I always tell people that the easiest way to lead people, hear me, is to make them trust you. Now, once the people can trust you, they will follow you. Now, I've been able to prove it by the grace of God severally. Now, the same thing is happening in my home. I told you many years ago when I got married, God said, son, you are not yet a man until you can lead your wife without you applying the rod of force if you can't lead her without force you are not yet a man so when i discovered when god told me that i began to discover methods praise the lord you know what i discovered is lacking in today's in today's christian life is that we have a lot of christians that don't know god so they don't really know what their god can do 
And because they don't really know what their God can do, they don't trust him enough with their life. Because some Christians are saying, okay, okay, pastor, if you say I should not lie, do you know that, pastor, I get my feeding from lying? Uh, pastor, if you say I should not cheat, you say I should not go into immorality. Pastor, I get my 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 support from it. Are you sure I'm not going to so can you see that it's a lack of trust? I wrote something here down that I want us I want to read out for us. Ignorance is a major source of fear. Ignorance is a major source of fear. If I'm sure of the decking I'm standing on, hear me, I can call even 50 people come and stand with me because I'm sure I know what is here but if I'm not sure <laughs> I'll say please just let me stand alone. am I communicating so what I believe is lacking in today's Christianity is that a lot of Christians are not creating more time to study to know their God a lot of Christians because if you see the way Elisha quickly respond to Elijah's touch you will know that Elisha already knew God. It was not Elijah that taught Elisha about God. Elisha already knew God. He was all already serving God. So it was easy for him to say, ah, ah, there is nothing God tell me to do that I will not do because I know that God is faithful. Let's prove it more. Let's look at scriptures. Let's start with Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Look at Daniel's uh, 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 own explanation. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 now look at this it says those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery that's not where we're going but look at the b part he said but the people who know their god what will happen to them they shall be strong the source of strength is knowledge What's the source of power? Knowledge. Those that know their God shall be strong. And because they are strong, the Bible says they shall carry out great exploit. Now, what's the question we are answering today? Why is it that we don't have to believers today that are willing to obey God? And I'm answering you by saying, today's believers don't know God enough to be able to trust God with their lives. And the same thing Daniel is saying, for they that do know their God. Now, one of us was sharing with me where in the office on, uh, on Wednesday, I said, said, Papa, God did a miracle for me. I said, what did God do? He said he was trusting God for a phone. He does all the editing of our, of our, our, our church here. And he used to use his phone. And every time the phone battery was giving him a problem. So every single time he wants to edit my videos, phone, phone battery. He said, where he was, he now said, Lord, Lord, you know I'm using my phone to do your work. And I need a new phone. And I need a new phone. Now, it was that same day that God sent somebody to give him a, a new phone. He was now telling himself, Papa, look at the phone. As he was speaking his own meter, I said, let me even share my own testimony with you. Now, it was in the close of the day and I needed some money. I said, Lord, and I need money. I want to buy uh, uh, gas into my car and I want to buy a large sum because I have some assignments in the weekend and I said Lord send somebody to me I just said I said Lord please send somebody to me today and we left we closed for the day nobody came at that time we closed so my wife just said okay let's just stroll around we've closed in the office let's just stroll around so I held her hand we're just strolling and somebody just saw us, ah, papa, mama, and packed. Greeted us. And said, ah, ah, let me give mama something, oh, let me give mama something, let me give mama something. And counted 20,000. We were just strolling and putting our hands. And mama said, oh yeah, take for, for the gas you want to buy. I was now telling, I said, see, anytime God gives you a miracle, hear me, he wants to improve your knowledge of him. Hello, so that you can know what he has capacity to do. If you can't trust God, you can't serve him. Because you'll be asking yourself, if I had to lie to get money, now they say if I become born again, I will stop lying. If you can't trust God, you will not want to stop lying. That's why 
for you to trust God, you cannot trust him if you don't know him. So what should you be doing as a child of God? Spend more time trying to know God. I wrote another example here. See what God did first before he brought Moses into the ministry. Exodus chapter 3, 1 to 12. We're also going to look at Exodus chapter 4, 1 to 15. Before God called Moses into ministry, you know what God first did for Moses? He first introduced himself to, to Moses. Now Moses was tending, tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Ur. I'm not yet true now. We are still in verse 1. Thank you. To the back of the desert and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. Now verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire. But the bush was not consumed. You know what God was trying to do? God wanted to teach Moses about himself. The same thing God is trying to teach you. But most of us don't, don't listen. When we come to church like this, God wants to teach us. But some of us, when we are in church, that's the time we want to sleep. When we come to church like this, God wants to teach us about himself. Some of us, when we are in church, that's the time we want to browse. Now, look at Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. Next verse. Why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near to this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father. Can you see? God wanted to introduce himself to him. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Move on, we stop at 12. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For now, for now, their sorrow. Yes? So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Verse 9, we stop at 12. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Yes, verse 10. Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 11. Verse 11. Move fast. Move fast. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? His next question will touch you. So he said, I will certainly be with you and this shall be a sign that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on the mountain. Verse 13. Move on. Move on. I want to show you something. Shagadaba said, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they said to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Can you see? Moses was yet to know God. And God said to them, I am who I am. He said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Jump to chapter 14, uh, chapter 4, 1 to 15. Now, every child of God, listen, it is your responsibility to search to know God. Find him. Listen, if you find him, it will not be difficult for you to obey him. The reason why you see that somebody is saying he's serving God obediently and another one is still struggling with sin is level of knowledge in God. You know why I will not lie today? Because I know that if God said he will do something for me, he will do it. All I need to do is to wait. I don't need to lie to take anything. If I, if I need to lie, if I had to lie, it means I don't trust him enough. Hello? So what propelled uh, Elisha to obey God that way was his knowledge of God. He knew that putting his life in the hands of God makes his life safe. Okay, let's read the next one. God now showed himself more to Moses. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they, they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. What shall I tell them, Lord? 
If they say you didn't send me, show me now. Verse 2, let's go. We have something at 15. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it to the ground. So he cast it to the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled. You know what God wanted to do with this first miracle? God wanted to show him that the God that is calling you is a miracle worker. So when you get to the people, he, you'll be able to, you'll be conf, conf, uh, conf, 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 confident enough. Listen, I can tell you, church, I'm your pastor. You can't serve God and regret if you truly serve him from your heart. If you serve God, hear me, and experience pain, that pain is for a purpose. I was, hold on now, coming back to that scripture. I was, I was leading prayer, my, our family prayer. That's the Afolabi's family prayer. My mother said, children, we used to have prayer every Saturday all over the world. So we do it online. So I, I used Psalm 23 to lead them. And when we got to verse 5, my senior sister was looking, my family members were looking, which prayer points we pass or bring out of verse 5? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, And I told them, I said, we are going to pray that Lord, give me the grace to stick to your will when it's difficult. Give me the grace to do your will when it's hard. Give me the grace to do your will when, it's, when it brings pain. Because somebody will say, how will God be my shepherd in Psalm 23 verse 1? And I will still need to go through the valley of the shadow of death. That you are serving God does not mean you will not face temptation. Hello? Did you hear me? But you know what? In that verse 5, David said, I, the Lord, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no you because you are with me. So that I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death does not mean that God is not with me. It's not a sign that God is not with me. I, am I communicating? But I'll be confident. I'll not be afraid because I know that he is with me. What I'm going through does not define whether God is with me or not. Now, what am I teaching you this morning? Trust God with your life. And for you to, how we are looking at how to generate power to trust him. The, then the Lord said to him, Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it and it became a rod. Hey, Moses, Moses said, this is a miracle. God was trying to show him something. Let me ask you. Those of you who are already born again, since you've been born again, what, what have you discovered about God? I want to ask all of you. One, one thing, just tell me. If we we'll go after line by line now. One thing that you have discovered about God. If you ask me, me, let me tell you my own first. So that you begin to think that. One thing I've discovered about God is that God does not love people sentimentally. If you do his will, you will get his, his provisions. If you don't do his will, he turns his back. That's me. Please get us an extra mic. I want to listen to all of you before we go to the next point. What have you discovered? Because you need to study the God. God is revealing himself so that you can know him. Because if you don't know him, you can't trust him. Hello? You, if you don't know him, you can't trust him. What's the essence of courtship before marriage? So that you can know the person you want to marry. Abby? If you don't know him, can you, will you take him? Okay, will, will, he, will you just meet, uh, uh, let, let me ask the ladies. Will you just meet a, a brother now? And tells you he loves you, he wants you to call on him. And the next thing I are saying, today we are going to see my mommy. Is it possible? No, you first need to know him. Please, be fast, be fast. We don't have all the time. Since you've been born again, what have you discovered? Don't tell us long story. Oh. Let's go like this. No, like this. This, 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 this way. I know we can finish in three minutes or, or ten minutes at, at most. What have you discovered about God? This mic is not working. Where's the second of this? Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Since I've been existing the living, what I discover about God is a God of. I think this is when you've been existing. This is where you give your life to Jesus. Okay. Since I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I be, I, I discovered that God is a faithful God, hmm. and when you serve Him, He will reward you. Hmm. And uh, it's a good God to the call. It is you that will continue to serve. When you serve him, he will reward you. 
And let's pick that. Okay. Praise That's Lord. his own discovery. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since I know him, I said, God again, I know God that he's never joke with his word. He never joke with his respect word. Respect his word. Mm. Mm, that's his understanding. He never jokes with his word. Since I was born again, I know that God has been faithful. He does things beyond imaginations. He does things beyond imagination. He uses uh, the the things that you commonize mm. to prove that he's God. Mm. The things you commonize. I, that, I must say, preach your personal encounter. You know that they are not saying the same thing now. Yes. Yes, sir. It's a covenant keeping. It's a covenant keeper. Yes. yes. Mm. So any covenant or promise that he gives to me and I walk towards will always mm. fulfill them. That's great. That's great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Me, I used to call him unimaginable God. Mm. And he's a God of reward. Mm. And he's a God that gives direction. He doesn't allow his children to fall into error. He doesn't allow his children to fall. Only if that person this will be. Okay. He has shared several times with me where he wants to make some mistakes. Yes. This appeal with God, he makes all the impossible possible. He makes the impossible. All what he says is not possible, he makes it possible. He makes it when possible. you believe him and trust him. When you believe and trust him. Ah, you just passed the mic. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I know God as a great provider. As a great provider. You always show up when you, if I, when you are the tight end. Mm. Mm. He said he will always show up when you are in the tight end. Wow. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know God as an all sufficient God. Mm. Yes, because He always come true for me. He always come true for you. Yes. Even when I wanted to give up. You show even up. when you want to you just show up. Hmm. Good experience. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's a wonderful God. He never fails. Never fails. Your personal experience has never failed you. Okay? Ah, and you know to pass my... <laughs> okay. He's a faithful God. Faithful God. Okay. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, since I, I give my life to Jesus, um, I discovered God that um, He's a God of mercy. It's a God of mercy. Uh, um, <laughs> he No, what I mean is that He must have made so many errors. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This microphone, this mic, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since I gave my life to Christ, when it is last minute to be disappointed or to be put to shame, the Lord show forth. Mm. I enjoy His grace even in my family. Mm. Enjoy grace. Even when it's last minute, He will just show up. Wow. Since I gave my life to Christ, it's a life changer. It's a life changer. Okay. Anybody on that roll? Okay. Okay. Um, me, I call him Agbani Lagbatson. Agbani Lagbatson. He doesn't live one halfway. Hmm. Uma, uma on your tree. Hmm. Your experience. Yes. He has not left you halfway. Yes. Okay. Okay. Praise God. Since I've given my life to Christ, I've realized that He's a covenant keeping God. Hmm. Whatever He promised, He will do it. He will do it. Okay. 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 Since I gave my life to Christ, I saw that He's an overcapable God. Over. Capable God. Okay. It doesn't take Him anything to break protocols for you. Hmm. Though He may come late, but every demotion comes with double promotions. Though He may come late. Look at His experience. Hmm. Okay. Since I gave my life to he has answered up my prayers and kept my life. Your, my life. Your life. Okay. And my family. It's 
and both physically and spiritually. Okay. God bless Praise you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My God is a faithful God. Mm. Because he never sleep nor slumber. He never sleep nor slumber. Okay. Praise okay. the Lord. Hallelujah. I know him as a father. I know him as a father. Because even at times when we want to use our own when I want to use my own wisdom, like I can do it myself. Mm. He will just look at me. But in his mercy he will come around and tell me that daughter, don't do this. Mm. No, that is how fathers do. Mm. So no matter how attended you are, they always call you to order. They always call you to order. That's your experience. Powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Since I give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I see him as my sustainer. Mm. He's a sustainable God. Mm. And he's always show up for me. Always. In fact, he's doing wonders in my life. Okay. Okay. We have just three or four more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Since I've given my life to Christ, my own personal experience that what I see about God or what I understand, what I know God for, is the kind of person that God is, though in my not, he will have seen it as delay, but to him it wasn't delay. Mm. He comes at the best time. And when he comes, he comes in a unique way. As in, he makes that thing, and when you are seeing it, you will be asking that God, wow, is it like this? So, God come in a way that you wouldn't explain it. You mm. won't understand it. Mm. You, will, you will be confused to yourself. Mm. And when it seems as if, oh, when you are being patient with God and you, you waited for him, it makes that thing come your way. And people that thought, that, oh, uh, evangelist, you are preaching. <laughs> I think that's the way, what he's done in my life is what okay. I'm just saying. Well, the Lord has been, is, 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 he comes in a unique way. In he comes unique, in a way that. Oh, Tito, unique way, unique way. <laughs> if we live, if we all had allowed to share the deep, deeper, deep experience, we won't live here today. I, I don't even know where to start from because, hmm. but I would say God is a protector. Protect he all. protects his own and is also a promise keeper. Mm. Even if it's to bring it out in a very unimaginable way, it will make sure that he keeps his promise. Good. He makes sure he keeps his promise. One more person. Those of you who are the technical, let's do that in two minutes. I have not preached the message at all. Yes. I know him as a God that cannot lie. And secondly, he's a divine provider. And provider. Yes, those in the technical. We have we can't come back there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I know God to be a gracious God. A gracious God. Yes, and He's full of, full of love. Mm. Yes, like nobody can love you as much as as He can. Yes. Wow. Nobody wants to say anything. Else. Okay, let's go back to. So go back to the Moses experience. That's what I'm telling you. If you don't grow in your knowledge of uh, in God, hear me. You can't trust Him. That's why every time God wants to show you more about himself. Look at this. Let's move to verse 5. That they may believe that the Lord God of their father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob had appeared to you. Go and show, which means go and show them this sign so that they will believe that the God of their fathers showed them, uh, appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he look it, uh, took it out, behold, it was... So his hand was leprous, like snow. God was still teaching Moses about himself. And he put, he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, it was restored like of his other flesh. Which means God was also trying to teach him. See, I'm a healer. I can destroy and I can put things in uh, a, a, a repair. Then it, then it will be if they do not believe you nor heed the message of the first sign that he may believe the message of the later sign look at moses again verse 9 moses now argued again and it shall be sorry and it shall be if they do not believe even these two signs or listen to your voice that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land you know what god is doing with all these things that god is doing god is doing these things to make both israel and Moses to trust him. Now look up church. 
all these things that you said you've just experienced that you've discovered about God you know what why God did it God did it so that you can trust him so if he's telling you come and serve him my daughter my son come and serve me don't think that serving God will not pay you now let's look at more experience there's no time leave that of Exodus look at the next one Mark chapter 3 and verse 14 Mark chapter 3 and verse 14 there's no time Mark chapter 3 then he appointed 12 that's the disciples for what purpose look at number one that they might what that they might what be with him first you know why he anointed them to be with him before he will now send them to go and preach he want them to be with him so that they can know him The level I've got into in God now, I discovered that, look up, whatever thing that is coming that people say is good, if I had to commit sin to get it, it's not God. So how do I know the will of God for my life? How do I know that something is a trap? I'll look at the entrance. Uh, Pastor, we have this thing, this good gift for you, uh, but the only thing is just that you have to lie about your age to get it. Uh, pastor you know what you just have to lie about your nation nationality to get it uh, pastor you don't know what you just need to uh, uh, tell them that you are a Muslim lie about your religion to get are you getting what I'm saying God will not put a good thing for, for you in the place of sin I'm showing you why we don't have Christians that are willing like Elisha again people don't know God so because they don't know him they don't trust him some people still believe that ah, we suffer, oh, you know, I will suffer, oh, I will suffer. Oh. Just like a, 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 a mother, a woman came to see me. The daughter wanted to get married to a brother in our church. And the brother is crippled on both feet. So the woman came, Pastor, I want to see you. I want to see you. They came, I brought them to my office. He said, Sir, I want my daughter to be pregnant before they do marriage. Ah. Uh -uh. I said, why? He said, I have gone for prayer and prayers. They said, my daughter cannot be pregnant if they get married. So if she, the brother does not get her pregnant, no marriage. And now says, see, in Christendom, sex doesn't come first. That in Christian marriage, how do we do it? Relationship with God will make us to discover his purpose, who we should marry which after we go into courtship our courtship must be without sex so that the, the journey will be pure then after marriage sex can come in he said what if she's not pregnant I said bet it with me mommy bet it with me she said are you sure I said I'm sure pastor are you sure I said mommy I'm sure okay I hand my daughter over to you beloved we did the wedding exactly nine months pa, the first one came one year plus second one came ah before three years so, ah I had to call brother it's, 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 it's okay it's, you don't do ah kilo day so I called the mom I said mommy can you see can you see that we are begging them to stop now you know why was mommy thinking like that because she, her knowledge of God was shallow if you know him, you will trust him. He said, that they may be with him. Let's read my handout. The confidence of the three Hebrew brothers before the threats of King Nebuchadnezzar is an eye-opener. The way Daniel also answered the king's executioner is also another lesson. Now, let's talk about that. The king said, everybody in my land must bow. If you don't bow, we'll cast you into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to themselves, if we bow, it means that we are serving the image that Nebuchadnezzar have erected. We won't bow to any other god but the living God. Then people, some people now went to tell the king. The king brought them. The king said to them, heat the fire seven times. Let them look at the fire. Once they see the fire, they will be afraid. I know they will bow. You know what these three men said? They knew God so well. They came up. They said, oh king, is he over this matter? We will not bow. 
our God is able to save us. That's one thing we know. Then if God decide not to save us, Umba. look at that confidence. That confidence came from knowledge. The source of fear is ignorance. The source of courage is knowledge. So take note of every experience you are having in God. If God showed up for you at a dying minute, you know what God is trying to tell you? God is trying to teach you that don't be afraid of any challenge that is coming. If I could show up for you a dying minute yesterday, I can still do it today. So anytime you see a challenge, even if it is one day to go, don't be afraid. Ah, I had the testimony of a man that God promised him. They, they gave him quick notice in his house and God said, I will give you a house. God did not say, I will give you a rented apartment oh. So the man was boldly, he's a Christian. God said he would give me a house. God said he would give God didn't show up until the day he was in the house. The bay leaves. Bay leaves are those people that came comes to bring out the judgment of the court. They came to their house and they were carrying their things and throwing it outside. Ah! And somebody will say, Has God lied? They were throwing it outside. They threw everything outside. He stood in front of his properties like this. It was not up to one hour. They said a woman was passing and asked, what is happening? They said the man could not pay rent. So they ejected him by force. Then where does he want to go? He said he does not have any place. The man said, I have, I have a house. I built it. I'm only looking for somebody I can put there. I don't need rent. I had that testimony. That was how the woman organized. They packed their things and they moved that man's property there. The last time I had, they said he was living there. But you know that if he does not trust God, that day they were packing his things out. What do you think he'll be saying? God, you are a liar. Beloved, they put Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego inside the fire. That was where God went to wait for them. Nothing happened to them. When they went to check the fire, they said, we saw somebody there. We put in three men, but we saw the four. The fourth one is like what? The son of God. They brought them out and they promoted them. Look at the way that God passed through to promote them. Let me tell your neighbor, trust God. But don't forget, you can't trust him if you don't know him. That's why you must make out time to study God. Let me read more. If you don't trust God, hear me, you won't be able to trust him with your lives. Some are thinking, if I give my life to Christ sincerely, if I give my life to Christ sincerely or totally and stop lying, stop cheating, stop fornicating with my fiancé, won't I lose? You know, some people, that's the fear you have. Ah, if I allowed that, if I told that boy to stop to, to, touching me and he has promised me that we are going to get married in the next uh, uh, by December we are getting married. if I tell him not to touch me again will he not leave me you want to continue in sin because you are, you are not seeing this particular fear it's because you don't know God if you know him how you are gada 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 your level of faith in him will be high. Let me rush through this. Beloved, because Jesus knew God, he was able to obey God even unto death. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. Let's look at it. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. Thank you. Can we read together? One, two, three, and let's go. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Look at that. He became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Imagine he was standing on the cross there and everyone was saying, he's a sinner. Some even said, if you say you are truly Saint of God, come down and we will believe in you. But they didn't know that he was playing a role. 
he was demonstrating his trust for God. That's why today there is no name as great as he is. Mention Jesus anywhere in the world. There is nobody that will say they don't know him. Trust God. Say here. Let's take these three, three truths I noticed about people who truly know God. Three truths I noticed about people who truly know God. Three truths I noticed about people who truly know God. Do you like one? I noticed that people who truly know God are never afraid of anything or anyone. That's one thing I noticed about people that know God. They are never afraid. So people will be asking, what kind of a woman are you? I went, I went for a program at um, um, Canaan Land about four years ago. It was a minister's conference. So part of the pastors that we were in the room together, one of the pastors was now sharing an experience of how the people of the village where Canaan land is came out and said, Bishop Oedeko took their land. That they don't want uh, uh, a winner's chapel on that land again. They want to send them out. So they came with guns. They said that Bishop was driving across. With their guns, they stopped him. He came down and told the security men, please stay aside. I was walking towards the people. They pointed gun. They said he uses he used his hand to do their gun like this. People calm down. You know what? I promise you guys. I will employ your sons and daughters. Let us build the university we want to build here. I promise your village job for your sons and daughters. Look at that confidence. It, some people will see gone. Even three miles away, they will run. People who know God don't know fear. Because they know that their God is in control. That's the first thing I noticed. Number two, I noticed this. People who know God are never confused. Even when they don't know what is happening, they know that their God is in control. Even they, they don't know what is happening. They don't know. They don't know what is happening. They don't know why what is happening is happening. But you just notice this confidence in them. My God is in control. That's why you need to study more about your God. And the third one I discovered. I discovered that people who know God have this peace of mind. They have rest in their heart. They know that for everything working together for them, that what? That love God and are called according to his purpose. Let me now tell you the last one. Truth that will develop your understanding in God. Let's see if we can take two. It's supposed to be four, but let's take two. Truth that will develop your understanding in God. Number one, you must be willing to make yourself an apprentice to those you see a deeper knowledge of God in. Should I come again? You must be willing to make yourself an apprentice to those you see a deeper knowledge of God in. Now which means when you see people that have deeper knowledge in the things of God, go learn from them. God will not teach you everything about himself directly. That's where some people are not, that's why some people are not growing. God will not teach you everything about himself directly. That's why you see the Bible says and Elisha was running after Elijah. Uh, he got to a point Elijah asked Elisha, "What do you want from me?" He says, "Sir, this thing I've seen in you, I want the double." Make yourself an apprentice to learn more of God. Both directly and indirectly. I told them in the first second service last week. That's why as a Christian, we read Christian books. That's why we buy books of other people's encounter and experience. Anytime I'm listening to Pastor Adeboe, I listen so well. Because 
the level he is operating in God, I never reach half. I have not reached half. A man that is just preaching and preaching, he will just keep quiet and say, Thank you, Jesus. Once he said, Thank you, Jesus, Baba, I have spoken. And we have proofs. Look at that testimony I told you. I don't use forget. It, the woman has been barren for about 12 years. And he said, God said there's a woman here. 12 years you have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. God said he's visiting you. By this time next year, you give back to a set of twins. And the woman said, Amen. Among the crowd. And the following year, she was to give back to a child. Uh, to, you know, she, was, she got pregnant as you, as the prof, according to prophecy. But they kept doing scan. It was only one child. And the day of delivery, she went to the hospital to deliver. She delivered one boy. Somebody will say, ah, that, that prophecy must not be for her. She came back home. Two weeks after, she was feeling stomach ache. They've done name you. Two weeks after, she said, my stomach is just aching me. They took her back to the hospital and the doctor said, ah, ah, madam, you've been pregnant. Why didn't you tell us? The woman said, I just delivered two weeks ago. Is he not here? They took delivery of me. It's this place. The doctor said, what you are feeling is labor pain. She delivered a baby girl. Do they call those ones twins? One bed is one week, uh, <laughs> two weeks in Tava. You now say, I will not learn from that kind of a man. You turn yourself to an apprentice to those that you see a much deeper understanding of God in. If you see me listen to Bishop Oedeko, you think, ah, if I don't listen to this. For 14 years, I was hearing his message every day. Child of God, open up to learn. God will not teach you directly everything about himself. If I ask some of you, in fact, you have not even read Bible, talk less of buying a Christian book to read. If we put any meeting apart from Sunday morning service, some of you will never come. Why do you think we invite other pastors from outside? So that you can also learn from them their own experience. When I read the story of uh, Ap 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 Apostle ah, time. Babalola, no, I didn't read it. I had it from a, a Koza pastor. What's his name? Um, pastor Biodun Fatoibo. I was listening to his message on their channel. He said, many years ago, I was very young. A, 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 a child, when they told me the story of Apostle Ayodini Babalola, their biggest church in Ilorin, that church is built in the evil forest of Ilorin. He said it was an evil people don't go there there was a big snake that used to live there anytime people commit offense they threw them in that forest they, they died there they said but when apostle Ayodili Babala came and met the king of Iloni that he needed to start a church they should give him a land the king thought of well the best thing to do is to give the man where he will go and die he said and Babala said they should give him seven days in that forest he entered the forest and for seven days he was there. The only thing they discovered that after seven days they saw that a very big python came out and dried. Obey. They now asked Apostle Babala what happened. He said, While he was praying, the snake stood up, was trying to say, Who is who has come to disturb me in my territory? He said, Babala said, where he was praying, the snake was so he just stood up and said, Ni oru ko Jesu Christi, iwe ejo to ufe ma da mi la mu be lo ye. Ude tukpa da sebi adwe, ni oru ko Jesu, oruwa. And he turned back, the snake had dried. Iruwa wantu ye ka stodi ni. Hello. So what do you do? You turn yourself to an apprentice. You know, Elisha had to turn himself to an apprentice to Elijah. Who are you learning from? I'm asking you. Because if you don't have any picture in front of you of a Christian, a kind of Christian life, you will think you are doing well. 
When I gave my life to Jesus, I wanted to be like Paul. I used to call myself, when they introduced me, I would say, Brother, uh, Brother Prince Willa Falabi, the greater apostle Paul of our time. That Paul was a man of knowledge. So I was always reading Christian books, reading Bible. Paul was a writer. I was always writing. I think I've written about 12 books now. Praise the Lord. Then lastly, don't forget, make yourself an apprentice. Then number two, that's the last one. Don't allow any form of discouragement. Even if it looks as if your pursuit to know him deeper is making life difficult for you. Should I come again? Don't allow any form of discouragement. Even if it looks as if your pursuit to know him deeper is making life difficult. You know, there's, there's this temptation that comes when you are trying to know God better. At times, it will first look as if you are losing. Some people will turn away from you. Some opportunities will slip out of your hands. You know why the devil is doing it? The devil wants you to backslide. He wants you to turn back. But don't give up. Make it a, a point of duty that every day you tell yourself, I won't go out of my house in the morning if I've not studied the Bible. And the way I used to do it in my days, let me tell you, every time you, you, you read the Bible, you know what? Have a jotter where you write down what you gain from what you read. Every time you read the Bible, have a jotter. You write down what you gain from what you read. It helps you to grow more. So let me ask you, will you commit more to studying God? Hmm? You have known something, but you need to know more. You've known a part of God. Let me tell you this story as I close. Take my Bible. Many years ago, when we were to have our first child, I took my wife to the clinic, to the hospital. And as usual, to pray for her and do what I do for women when they want to deliver like that. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you, to this baby in this womb. It's time for you to come. Come forth in Jesus' name. I give you one hour. Come out in the name of Jesus. It has always worked. But when it got to the terminal of, of my wife, I did the same thing. I give you one hour. I declare. And the next one hour, I'll be called. So I went to sit down outside. One hour, they didn't call me. Two hours, they didn't call me. Three hours, they didn't call me. Four hours, ah, five hours, the whole day. Ah. Then I said, Lord, what's going on? Because everything will not always flow according to your will. Those of you that says, uh, like when uh, Shalom was speaking, you know, baby faith. God always answers all my prayers. If you know God, He doesn't always answer every prayer there are some of your prayer that is not in accordance to, your, to his will. When you are still a baby, he will answer every of your prayer. If you ask for sweet, he will give you sweet. Ask for drink gum, he will give you drink gum. But when you grow to a point, Lord, give me coke. You say diabetes is close. I won't give you coke. I won't give you coke. You will take a friend and a wuro. I won't give you coke. So right there, I was saying, Lord, what is happening? And God says, son, you are my servant. You will minister to thousands of people. Some women will deliver through Caesarean operators. Yes. They will need experience. Without you people Im impacting faith in them, they will not have the courage to go through the surgical table. I will allow my daughter, your wife, to go through the surgical table, not because she has sinned, but because she can she can minister to other women. <sighs> Lord. And I said, Lord, when do you want it to take place? He said, it will take place today. Because I promised you many years ago that your first child, the naming will be done on your birthday as a birthday gift to you. <sighs> it's true. I now remember the promise. So, I went to see the doctor. Doctor, what is happening? What is delaying my wife? He said, eh, the baby is not coming at all. I didn't descend at all. I said, then what do we do? He said, eh, we are thinking of 
trying, that keep trying. I say, if you keep trying, what will happen? He says, either we lose the baby or we lose the mother. Ah. I said, well, you cannot lose the baby and lose the mother. We have waited for this baby for three years. And I cannot lose my wife. What else can I say? You know, most pastors don't use to agree for CS. But I don't know. I said, that's the only option. I said, yes. And no problem. So I went to meet my wife. She was in the labor room still trying to push. You know, I will do it by myself. Ah. And I said, God spoke to me that this thing is going to be operation. And the doctor just told me now. She burst into tears. If I cannot encourage my wife, hear me, I cannot encourage anybody. That's why the Bible says, he that cannot manage his house, is not fit to manage the church. That's why I always tell every pastor, your marriage is your first church. So I sat down with her. I started telling her scriptures. I told her what God told me. I told her how to begin to visualize how she will be counseling women who will go through this later. And her faith was boosted. Do you know the funny part? When they operated her and brought our sister, who is now in your life, out, she was still sleeping. The doctor said they had to spank her, pa, before she woke up and cried. That's where she got her sleeping grace from. Ah, she has this sleeping annoyance. We used to tell her, this is the sleep you slept in the womb, but I used to call. <laughs> But what am I bringing out? God told me ahead. Will you study God? Take time. There are several things I've prayed for, Shalom, that God has not given me. It does not mean that He's not God. He does not mean that He does not love me. He loves me. But He has a better plan. Let's be on our feet. Will you study God? Tell him I will study. Lord, show me, show me more of yourself. I want to be where you are. Tell him. Dwelling in your presence. If you still don't know this song. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. Don't know anything. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. Kai. I just want to be with you. So now, let me give you your first assignment before I release you. Go back to your Bible. 99.9% .9 of what you need to know about God is in your Bible. Now, what you learn from other people are they are the explanations of the things in the Bible that you don't understand. But get committed. Make up your mind. Stop coming to church because you need miracle. Come to church to know God. It is when you know Him, you can trust Him. If you don't know Him, you can't trust Him. It is when you know him, you can have peace and mix the storm. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, please reveal more of yourself to your people in Jesus' name. As they go into this new week, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I declare that the heavens be open for blessing over them in Jesus' name. I declare that this new week, Lord, you will bring new blessings, new favor, new opportunities to your people in Jesus name thank you father if there's anyone here marked for evil I declare that that evil mark is erased this week you will not